Hello everybody and welcome to Parks Bros. It's Drew here and today we are going to be heading down to SeaWorld San Diego for our full in-depth review of Ever. Ever is the newest roller coaster at SeaWorld San Diego, with its official opening date being March 12th, 2022, and it featured a quick period of pass holder previews prior to opening. Moving on to stats though, this ride is not just the newest coaster at SeaWorld San Diego, it is also the tallest, fastest, and longest dive coaster in the entire state of California. In terms of height to start things off, Emperor is 153 feet tall, officially the tallest coaster at SeaWorld San Diego. It features a 143 foot tall drop, which gets you up to the speed of 60 miles an hour. And of course, in terms of length, this coaster is 2,411 feet. Throughout all 2,000 plus of those feet, you will go through three separate inversions or three moments of being upside down with an Immelman inversion, a barrel roll, and a flat spin. Of course, this ride being a dive coaster, you will be held at the very top of that drop for a good two to three seconds before plummeting down that 90 degree drop all the way towards the ground, creating quite the different and exhilarating experience that has not been seen in San Diego County until now. With all that said, low, let's figure out how to get there. So once you enter in under the giant wave that greets you to SeaWorld San Diego, you're going to kind of walk straight until you get to the main pathway on the right hand side of that main entry plaza. Take that main path right all the way through the ocean explorer realm of the park, passing by rides such as Tentacle Twirl and eventually Electric Eel on your right. You'll keep following that same direction until you just passed Electric Eel and you'll make a right there towards Journey to Atlantis. From there, start heading towards Journey to Atlantis, and that's when you'll see an Emperor sign greeting you to its own separate area of the park on the left-hand side. Follow that pathway lined with some benches and nice grass work before you'll be greeted with a couple of switchbacks as well as the main queue and plaza for Emperor. From this point, you're gonna want to buy a locker for any loose articles that you have, especially bags and backpacks, because they will not be allowed in the station. Once you enter the queue though, it is basically a couple of switchbacks before getting into the main line itself, which will greet you with a couple extra facts about penguins all around, which I think can be quite educational if you ask me. Lining this queue will be a couple of umbrellas and some quite limited greenery, including small bushes and some flowers, as you get one of the best views of this coaster. As you keep walking through that queue, though, you'll eventually make a left turn and a right turn going right underneath the lift hill and right next to the lift motor, which I think as a nerd is pretty cool. And once you've made your way past that, you will walk up some stairs up into the station. Of course, if you can't use stairs, go up the exit queue, which we'll talk a little bit about later on after getting off the ride, as that does have a rampway all the way up to the station. But now that we've made it to the station, at least as of now, it it is quite barren to say the least. As of now, once you get up to the station, you'll be greeted with three different rows you can choose. The first row, the second row, and the third row, as there are three rows on this ride, if you couldn't tell already, with the first row having a bit of an extended queue section. And that's about it. Above this little queue section, there are some tarps to potentially block the sun, but to be honest, they don't do a very good job at that. I know plenty of people have made jokes about wearing sunscreen if you want to go ride this ride, and I can definitely recommend it after 
riding it a lot. I would be lying to you if I said I did not get sunburned sitting in that station for a long time as there is truly minimal shade structures and I really hope this changes fairly soon. And you never know, this review is technically being made prior to the opening date. So hopefully SeaWorld can put that little bit extra into hopefully shading guests as well as their employees in that station. I feel like I should also mention the fact that this shaded area is only over the queue portion. And when you hop onto a seat on Emperor, there is absolutely no covering whatsoever. And to me, this is a big bummer. And I really hope SeaWorld can take the time to change it very soon. Now, with all that said, let's move on to the coaster itself and have ourselves a seat. This train, as I did mention, has three rows, but with six riders per row, totaling for 18 riders per train. Once you take a seat, if you've ridden other B&M type coasters, if you didn't know this is a B&M, like Silver Bullet or Batman or Riddler's Revenge or even Tatsu. But this seat is quite accommodating and you'll feel like you're falling backwards once you actually sit down because there's so much room that way. Now, if you're curious on the restraint, it is an over the shoulder restraint, but unlike a lot of B&M creations, it is a vest restraint, meaning that mainly once you pull it over your shoulder, the main part of the restraint is a lap bar system, which is quite comfortable if you ask me, but then coming out of the lap bar and back over your shoulders is an actual vest, kind of like a rubbery material. And if you've been on coasters such as Valraven or Gatekeeper at Cedar Point, maybe even Banshee at Kings Island, or of course Tatsu at Six Flags Magic Mountain and Manta at SeaWorld Orlando, you would kind of know what this feels like. It can get quite snug after a while of sitting there, but during your entire ride experience, I gotta say, it is probably one of the more comfy restraints for me personally. But do remember, I am incredibly skinny, so even at the restraints tightest, it doesn't feel like it's pushing in very hard. So to me, this restraint feels more like a warm hug than a boa constrictor. But I will say, in comparison to all the other restraint systems that I mentioned it's similar to, I would say this one's even a little more forgiving than those. Of course, once you have that restraint all the way over your shoulders and ready to go. Make sure to buckle up a little seat belt to connect it to the bottom of your seat and you'll be ready to take flight with the largest penguins in the world. The ride experience will start when the floor of the station quickly falls away as this coaster is floorless, also making it the first floorless dive coaster in all of California. But then you will see the main station railings open up slowly before you head out of the station itself. From this point, you'll make a 180 degree right turn, kind of dipping down just a tiny bit, giving you a little bit of speed before you make it to the lift hill. From this point, you head up that 45 degree lift hill at a crazy quick pace, which I gotta say was really the talk of the town when we were riding the coaster on the media day. Before you know it, you'll be all the way at the top, 153 feet in the air, and you will get one of the best views on any coaster I can actually think of. On the right hand side, as soon as you crest that lift hill, you'll get a perfect view of downtown San Diego. And I gotta say, this was the first time I ever realized the skyline of San Diego and how pretty it really could be. But as you make that slow 180 degree left turn, you'll get this perfect panorama from downtown to the grassy mountains all the way to Mission Bay. And eventually at the end of your view, you will get the rest of SeaWorld San Diego and all the way out to the ocean. If you're sitting in the front row, especially this feels like an observation deck. And I absolutely love this portion of the ride even though it is a very slow turnaround section. As you've picked up a little speed though, you'll eventually hit a small break before latching on to that holding chain. This portion will suspend you over that 143 foot tall 90 degree drop and take your view from the ocean and the rest of SeaWorld all the way down to the ground. This is what makes it a dive coaster and I gotta say this is always a stupidly exciting time. Especially especially if you're sitting in that front row because you get an unblocked view of the ground. Sadly though, the view is not the same in the second row or the third row. The third row, you do kind of 
get a view of SeaWorld that way. And the second row though, you mostly get the view of seats. But before you know it, you're gonna be dropping down that vertical drop all the way towards the ground. And I gotta say, this gives you some awesome airtime or some weightlessness, kind of pushing you out of your seat into that restraint. And I gotta say, if you want the best airtime on this moment, sit towards the back. It feels pretty relentless in that moment. Whereas towards the front and even in the second row, it's just a really fun moment of just feeling like you're getting lifted off the ground, even though you're heading directly towards it. Once you get all the way towards the ground though, you'll start to feel the positive G's pushing you back down into your seat quite forcefully. And this is where the picture moment will be on the left hand side of the train. So if you wanna show off your face of terror, make sure to do so right there. But before you know it, you'll be heading back up doing kind of a backflip with that Immelman inversion, which gives you a cool little moment of weightlessness near the top before you twist out and level out towards the ground again, picking up that speed, getting back up to 60 miles an hour. This is quickly followed by a hammerhead turn almost bringing you completely upside down as you change directions going 180 degrees to the left. It's almost like a really steeply overbanked turn. And I gotta say, this was a really cool moment of the ride, not giving you any hang time or anything like that, but just really graceful. This is something that I feel like I have to mention. After that Immelman and of course that drop, this ride feels like one continuous element. Everything is so smooth how it's made together and it almost feels like you are a penguin twisting and diving all the way underneath that Antarctic Ocean. Soon after the hammerhead turn, you and your raft of penguins, if you didn't know that's what a group of penguins swimming together is called, you'll be greeted with that barrel roll element. If you've been on Valraven at Cedar Point, these elements are near identical. Obviously, Emperor's is just a tiny bit smaller, but my oh my, this is probably my favorite inversion on the ride. It gives you a little bit of weightless and that zero G type of feeling, but it also gives you some cool lateral forces if you're sitting on the edge seats all the way to the right or all the way to the left. On the right, I felt these lateral forces more than anywhere else, but on the left, you get a little bit of an extension of hang time potentially as you go into that inversion first. Outside of the drop, this is probably my favorite moment of the ride, I can't lie, but before you know it, you'll be twisting back towards the ground in a really cool moment motion before perfectly transitioning into that flat spin inversion. This is very similar to what many would call a corkscrew, but it feels bigger, more like a zero G roll if it was twisted to the side a little bit. This gives you a little bit of weightlessness as well and some cool lateral forces as you twist all the way around before twisting again into that right-handed bank turn 180 degrees into that brake run. This moment gives a little bit of positive G's, which is nice. And at that point too, you still have what feels like 60 miles an hour of speed as you slide and glide into the brake run itself. This is something I have to mention. This is probably the smoothest brake run I can think of. Just the way it slows down is just incredibly smooth. But once you get back into that roofless station, you'll be allowed to step out of your seat toward the left-hand side and walk down that rampway around the first turnaround of the coaster. This, of course, is where wheelchair access is, as well as quick queue. So if you have quick queue for the ride, which you can buy individually for this coaster, make sure to walk up that way, and you'll eventually meet down with the rest of the queue, walking backwards alongside it before you're back in the entry plaza of the coaster. Make sure to grab your belongings out of your locker and the phone photo elements will be right there if you want to purchase your photo of course and just to the right of the lockers will be a small gift shop featuring plenty of souvenirs for emperor but with that your entire experience on emperor is now officially over Alrighty, it's time for my personal thoughts on this fun B&M dive coaster. Yeah, I really enjoy this thing. I think in terms of thrill coaster, I don't know though if I would say it's the most thrilling coaster at the park, especially with Electric Eel right there with the forwards and backwards launches and of course putting you upside down 150 feet in the air. But then again, this ride is quite intimidating with that 90 degree drop, especially being held at the top and of course the multiple in 
versions that you'll encounter on the ride. So I would say if you're the most scared of going upside down, this ride is going to be the most intense coaster at the park for you. But in terms of forces, this thing is not nearly as intense as Electric Eel, at least in my opinion. This thing doesn't try to break you with crazy positive or crazy negative forces like Electric Eel can. Emperor truly is more of a graceful experience all around. It really does feel that way. I do acknowledge though that I am more of a thrill seeker, so of course I have quite a skewed view when it comes to these types of rides, but for me Emperor was insanely re-rideable. I could ride it legitimately all day without getting a headache or feeling gross or anything like that, for the exception of maybe getting sunburnt like I did on media day. But Emperor does a great job at combining all of its elements together. I honestly think this coaster has some of the best transitional moments on any ride out there. Every single major element of this ride is seamless with another, and the way it flows and moves throughout the layout is just near perfection. I feel like I should mention this though, if you're looking for a more airtime filled ride, Emperor I don't think is going to be your favorite in the park necessarily, although there is one great moment of airtime. But if you're looking for an all around encompassing great thrill coaster, I think this is probably the best ride that SeaWorld San Diego has. Obviously, the little ones shouldn't be taking on Emperor, at least have them ride Manta first, but Emperor seriously is one of the best potential fits that I ever could have seen going to SeaWorld, and I'm so, so happy that it's finally opening up. I figure though, before we keep moving on, I should mention some of potentially the cons with the ride. The area itself is quite barren, and to be honest, that wouldn't really bother me if there weren't rides like Manta at the park that are just surrounded with lush scenery as well as plenty of theming. Obviously, a ride themed to Antarctica is going to be themed incredibly different to that of a Polynesian style of experience, but I would love to see some changes in the future with maybe even just small iceberg type structures coming out of the ground. Icebreaker actually had a couple of those and just one or two of those really livened up that theme and that area quite a bit. And of course, the queue and the station being barely covered from the sun, while potentially very accurate to Antarctica, in California does not work very well, especially with how bright the sun can get on those summer days especially. But moving on to more of a pro note again, this thing really is just a fun experience, and I would say my number one spot to go within the park for at least the next couple of years. Alrighty, that's enough of me blathering about my personal thoughts and opinions. Let's get to those ratings real quick. If you haven't seen my reviews in the past, I do have more of an unorthodox rating system. And of course, make sure to go check out all my other reviews as a couple of those playlists will be linked right now. But if you didn't know, I start off with a ski slope rating, pretty much giving you an idea of how experienced of a rider you should be before taking on this coaster. There are intensity ratings and fun ratings out of five stars. And of course, my personal score out of 10. It's a little wacky. It's a little all over the place, but that's just like me. So to start off the ski slope rating, this is definitely for experienced riders. A black diamond is definitely what I would give it. And some suggestions of what to ride prior to this coaster would definitely be things like Tidal Twister, Manta, Journey to Atlantis, and even a couple of those kiddie rides. But I will say I do still think that Electric Eel is probably the most intense coaster overall at the park. But that does not mean Emperor is not intense, as I would give it a 4 out of 5 star rating for intensity. It is still incredibly intense, especially with a lot of those loops and that 90 degree drop. It is pretty crazy to think about. But this thing is so graceful and fun, I gotta give it a 4 star rating for that as well. It's just super enjoyable, as well as being quite intimidating. Having that much speed while whipping through the inversions like you do in that very almost wave-like manner is just so much fun. But with that all said, let's head on to my personal rating out of 10. And for me, personally, Emperor is an 8. This thing is really, really fun, and I would say it is very close, if not, to being my favorite coaster at the park, if not my favorite ride at the park. My only issues that I really have with the ride itself is that lack of theming as well as the lack of shade, which I think is obvious at this point. Even though technically that doesn't hurt the ride experience itself, it definitely can hurt the overall experience of trying to go ride the coaster. But I gotta say, Emperor is such a fun 
fun addition to the park. And I can't wait to go back down and get myself some more rides very, very soon. And do not be shocked if I end up doing some Emperor Marathons instead of Manta Marathons next trip. But with that all said, I want to ask, what is your thoughts on Emperor? I would love to know whether you love or don't love the ride. Let me know down in the comments below. And of course, while you're down there, make sure to go check out all those links in the description. Whether it's for my Instagram or my Discord or even those pins that I'm still selling, I'd really appreciate if you went down there. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe. We've got plenty more reviews coming. But with all that said, I wanted to say thank you so, so much for tuning in to this review. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy Emperor as much, if not more. But until next time, we'll see you on the next ride.